Hello, and welcome to episode 6 of Sarastro's Descent painting series. In this video, we'll be painting Jane Fairwood from Fantasy Flight Games' Descent Journeys in the Dark 2nd Edition. Jane has a strong pose with a billowing cloak and a rich palette of golden browns, reds, and purple, making her quite a satisfying figure to paint. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I chose to prime the miniature in white, but I've also provided an application of non oil to help expose the details and darken the recesses. We'll then apply the base colours along with some shades for individual sections of the miniature. Next, we'll highlight the figure before applying some finishing touches, which will include painting one or two decorative details on the clothes, as well as providing a scenic base. Let's begin. After priming the miniature in white, I've chosen to shade the entire figure with some Nuln oil. This helps to define the details, making them easier to paint, but it also darkens the recesses, which makes life easier when we're applying the base colours, as we don't need to get right into every tiny gap. Providing a Zenithal highlight also has this benefit, but if you don't have an airbrush or multiple shades of spray primer, this simple bit of pre-shading is quite a handy trick. Let's now apply our base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin with some Cadian Flesh Tone, which I'm darkening slightly with a little Bugman's Glow. Next, I'm using Mornfang Brown for all of the darker brown areas, which means the leggings, belts and straps, knife holder, arrows and quiver. For the light brown areas, I'm using a 2 to 1 mix of Scrag Brown and Avalon Sunset. I'm using this for the tunic, gloves and boots. We can paint the bow with some Screaming Skull. And for the ties on the bow, I'm using Scrag Brown. I'm painting the string of the bow with a roughly equal mix of storm vermin fur and black. I'm using quite a dark colour here to de-emphasise the thickness of the string. For the hair and arrow fletching, I'm using a roughly 3-2 mix of Mephiston Red and Mornfang Brown. And for the silver metal detailing, I'm using Stormhost Silver. Before painting the purple cloak, I'm going to provide a wash of Agrax Earthshade to all of the painted areas except for the skin. I'm doing this now so we don't need to worry about hitting the areas of purple cloth. Thank you. 
and I'm now shading the skin with some Reichland Flesh Shade. We can now paint the purple cloak and sash, and I'm using a roughly 4 to 1 mix of Macridge Blue and Mephiston Red. We can then shade this with an equal mix of Drukei Violet and Drakenhof Nightshade. We're now ready to apply the highlights. Working in no particular order, I've chosen to begin with the light brown leather, and I'm starting with a roughly equal mix of scrag brown and ureal yellow. We're going to be taking these highlights quite far, so this first layer needs to cover most of the flat and upturned areas. We can also highlight the wraps on the bow with this, but I won't be taking them any lighter. I'm now adding Screaming Skull in several increments to push the highlights up until we achieve a nice pale tan finish. For the dark brown areas, I'm going to be lightening some Mornfang brown with gradual additions of Towelite Okra.
my final highlights here will be with some pure Towlite Okra. I'm now going to highlight the cloak. Here I'm going to lighten my original 4 to 1 Macridge Blue and Mephiston Red base tone with increasing quantities of an equal Calgar Blue and Jean Steeler Purple mix. Here on the right is my Calgar Blue and Jean Steeler mix, which I'm using to lighten the base tone on the left. For the back of the cloak we can do some feathering with a damp brush to achieve a more gentle gradient. You may also like to thin the paint even more and build the tone up in glazes like we did for Averick in episode 3. I'm now using the pure Calgar Blue and Jean Steeler mix. I'm going to push the highlights further by mixing in a little ivory in a couple of stages, mindful of the fact that I'll be toning things down with some additional shade in a moment. I'm now going to finish the cloak off by applying some Drukii Violet, which I'm thinning with an equal measure of medium. This can be applied more heavily to the recessed areas, and can even be feathered out on the back to help smooth the transitions. Next I'm going to highlight the hair and arrow fletching using a roughly equal mix of Mephiston Red and Scrag Brown. I'm now going to lighten this with the addition of some Towelite Okra in a couple of stages.
I'm now using pure Towelite Okra for my last few highlights. For the skin, I'm using some pure Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm then simply going to add white in a few stages for the upper highlights. I'm also going to bring a little colour to the lips with a small application of Reichland Flesh Shade. For the bowstring, I'm going to use some Storm Vermin Fur, which I'm thinning down to an almost wash-like consistency. I'm then going to pull this upwards to create a simple gradient. I'm applying two layers of this. I might also add a few small highlights to the bow itself with some screaming skull. With the highlights complete, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to paint the emblem on the cloak, which is made up of three colours. For the blue sections, I'm using a base of Calador Sky. I'm then using some Hoeth Blue to add a couple of highlights. Likewise, for the grey sections, I'm starting with Mechanicus Standard Grey. And I'm highlighting with Administratum Grey. And for the orange symbol, I'm using Scrag Brown. And I'm following this with some Towelite Okra for the highlights. I'm now going to use some white to clean up the trim on the sleeves. I'm then using the same colours I used for the crown symbol to paint on the jagged pattern, which means starting with some scrag brown. I'm then going over this with a slightly smaller application of Towelite Okra.
Next, I'm going to introduce a little eyeshadow using some thinned Druki Eye Violet. I'm then going to widen the whites of the eyes with a touch of ivory. And I'm following this with a small hit of German Grey for the pupils. Finally, I'm going to use some Auric Armor Gold to pick out the buttons on the tunic. With the painting complete, we can go ahead and give the miniature a protective matte spray. I'm then rebasing the miniature as detailed in Episode 1. And, alongside adding some tufts of grass, I've also chosen to add some yellow flowers. These come in strips and can be cut to size and stuck down with a little super glue. These flowers nicely complement the purple cloak and reflect Jane's affinity for nature. And this completes Jane Fairwood. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. This completes the sixth base set hero from the game, leaving just two remaining, along with a host of exciting monster figures. My sincere thanks, as always, go to the amazing patrons for so generously supporting this work. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Descent, Journeys in the Dark. Happy painting!